Hey folks, how's it going? Jeff Antoniak here. Uh, jazz process video number nine. I can never decide whether to say process or process. One is sort of Canadian, which is me. The other is sort of American, which is me now too. So you can translate for yourself. Anyway, here talking about my process of getting ready for some big gigs. We all have to do it. It doesn't matter what level you're at. Whether you're a beginner and it's your first piano recital, that's a big gig, right? And whether you're going on stage with John Schofield or whatever. I happen to have a gig coming up with the Baltimore Symphony. Five gigs, kind of feature stuff. So I've been really shedding that and it occurred to me to share this process with you. Um, and one of the things that we all have to think about is how to balance everything, life, right? I mean, whether it's practice time versus family time, social, like being a human being time versus being in the shed, all that stuff is very important. And uh, I thought about that today because I'm playing at Twins Jazz in DC this weekend, a good friend of mine from North Texas, like decades ago, Russ Nolan, one of the, made the downbeat rising star list uh, this week. He's gonna be playing with my band, Mike Pope on bass, Tony Martucci on drums, Wade Beach on piano. It's an amazing band two saxophone players. So uh, Russ sent a bunch of uh, music and man, some of this stuff is kind of hard. So I'm actually putting the Baltimore Symphony stuff on hold until Sunday so I can actually learn some of Russ's music here. Um, well, let me play one of my old tunes that I've never ever played on alto before. It's uh, called Blues for J.D. Salinger. And I'm just having to learn some of my tunes on alto. The idea is I have to play a lot of alto on this BSO gig. So I'm just trying to train myself how to play alto, get the voicing back. I haven't really played alto in practically 20 years, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a gas with it. I'm now an alto player. I'm going to be soon. <laughs> times on tenor <laughs> and uh, I have to remember to play it in the right key. All right, well, that's going to be my practice this week. You know, one of the things I'm constantly telling my students, whether it's professional level students or uh, some of the adults that I work with, is like one of the big balance things is the difference between playing and practicing. So a lot of folks just like playing. They put their horn together, they get their instrument out and they play. They have a great time playing, put it away. And that's fine, but at some point we actually have to practice some stuff, right? Now, of course, if, you know, at a pro level, we've figured that out. But there are plenty of people, I used to be one of these people, especially in college, where I used to practice, 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 but it wouldn't occur to me to play as much. Of course, I got a lot of playing opportunities. That may be a subtle difference, but I think it's a pretty huge difference. Um, practicing licks, practicing stuff around the circle of force, all the million things we can keep ourselves busy with. That isn't music, right? That's like going to the driving range and the putting green and working on your technique, but you're not playing golf. You're not gonna be a good golfer that way, right? So that's someone that's practicing and not playing the game. Then there are people that just love playing the game, going out and whacking the ball. That's great, but you're not gonna get better. You're probably gonna get worse as you drive in your bad habits. That's too much playing, not enough practice. So one of the things I've found, especially having to come back to the alto saxophone, is uh, I used to sort of practice too much and not make enough music. This is going back 30 years ago. So I've flipped that around, and my practice is very much about making music a lot of the time. Well, so I'm finding, especially coming back to alto, I'm having to revisit some of the foundations, some of the fundamentals. So I'm kind of enjoying trying to rebalance my practice a little bit. So, you know, that's one of the big things going on here. So I tell you what, let me, uh, let me show you one of Russ's tunes here. It's called Relentless, and uh, actually a pretty good title, because it's like a relentless parade of notes that it wouldn't occur to me to put one after another. So it's a, it's a very cool tune, very cool changes, and I've only looked at this a handful of times, and it does not fall under the fingers for me. Let me see if I can play a bit of this. Supposed to be way faster. Play it again. So I've, you know, I, I played this tune maybe for 10 minutes yesterday, and I'm frankly 
going to have to memorize this thing. Not that it's going to be memorized without music in front of me, but there's no time to read the notes. Um, some of it makes sense to me in that I see the chord change and that's a C-sharp minor lick. Okay, I kind of see how that fits in the chord. That's helpful. There's one lick later on. That one there. Uh, I play something that's similar to that, but different. So I go on my autopilot. There, this is cool half couple half step things in there. Some little half step approach things that are almost like something I do but they're not what I do. So I am messing up that practice. So I'm having to, or rather that passage, I'm having to really reprogram myself on some of this. sent me the E-flat chart, he transposed something up, probably hit the transpose button, it's all written up an octave like way too high. I have to remember to play that down an octave and it just caught me right there in real time. So anyway, this, this is the kind of practice I'm doing, this sort of triage of I would love to be practicing the Baltimore Symphony music. I've, I've told you before, probably 93 pages, uh, all sorts of feature stuff, solos, cadenzas, it's pretty nuts. Um, but the triage part is that's not till December 8th. This is happening in three or four days. So I got a bunch of music and the blowing to get together. And frankly, I'm, I'm thinking 90% about getting these melodies nailed. And I'm thinking maybe 10% about the blowing. The changes make a lot of sense. They're atypical. I don't think there's a single 2-5 in any of the tunes that, that Russ sent. But... I think I see how they make sense. So for me, I want to nail these melodies, and I think that's going to give me a real great toehold into improvising on this stuff. So anyway, I'd love to know how you approach this kind of stuff, this, this, how you practice things, how you balance things, whether it's in life or music or whatever. I'm, I'm just trying to open a conversation here. The process of how we get ready for uh, playing and practicing and learning, it's a big part of how I work with all of my students, pro level, amateur level, whatever it is. So thank you for checking it out. Please check out the other videos that came before this. There's eight others. There'll be about eight more coming up to and including the Baltimore Symphony gigs. Uh, it's a jazz version of the Nutcracker, not the Nutcracker suite, the entire Nutcracker, 90 minutes of music, 25 movements. So it's actually a world premiere. Really proud to be part of it. And I'm practicing my butt off, alto saxophone, tenor saxophone, baritone saxophone. All right, thank you very much. All these videos are archived on YouTube, so just go to Jeff Antoniak Educator, and that'll get the correct page. There's also a Jeff Antoniak page with some uh, playing on there. All right, thanks, everybody. Take care.